Hi and welcome to another Magic of Fishing video. Today I want to talk about a bait and a particularly old school bait which is this stuff, wheat. And older viewers may remember it being deadly for roach back in the day but it's fallen out of fashion and younger viewers or those new to the sport might be thinking isn't that something out of my breakfast cereal. But it can be deadly on its day, it's really easy to prepare, dirt cheap and you can bag it up, freeze it, that's what I do, and you've always got some on hand if you get a, a chance to go on a short session but no time to get to the tackle shop for some, for some live bait. But it can be even more effective than live bait on its day and I'll hopefully show you that today. So this is a small bag of the stuff, 500 grams, and believe it or not, you'll get a good few pints uh, worth of bait out of just that small bag. It swells up by about two to three times its uh, dry size and weight once it's been soaked and gently cooked and it's so simple to prepare that I'm not even going to show you it stage by stage but rather just give you the the basics and the first thing you need apart from uh, the wheat itself is just a, a sealable bait tub or bucket without a perforated lid something that's airtight uh, you'll just need some water out the tap I like to use a, a bit of flavouring because wheat does take on a lot of water and uh, you can flavour that water with anything you like. I've gone for a, a, a proven roach attractor in pineapple here. And then once you've given it a good soak, you'll need a, a saucepan. And once your wheat has had a good soak, I mean a day would do it, but ideally a good two or three days as I say, you can take it out of the fridge transfer it to a pan and then you're looking to cook it for the bare minimum of time. You want to cook it as gently as possible just to make it a little bit softer. So generally you just bring it to a gentle simmer and then as soon as you've got it to that near boiling point turn off the heat and let it cool down from there and that will give you your finished wheat which will be nice and soft. Firm enough to hook but you can actually squish it quite easily as you can see. And that really is attractive to a lot of freshwater fish. And then once you've got your cooled and cooked wheat, your stewed wheat, you can bag it up if you've done it in bulk and got too much for a session. That goes in the freezer. This is probably an example I made a year ago. I can defrost it overnight, go the next day if I think I've suddenly got a chance to go. And it will keep really good tip-top condition for that kind of time. And this is actually some that I defrosted uh, from a very similar bag to that just last night. So rather than talking about it, why don't we get on the bank and uh, I'll try and show you that it's still as effective as always. As usual, I've uh, pulled together the smallest amount of tackle that I can for the session to get off nice and quickly. Got the usual quiver with a ready-made rod, landing net handle and rod rest, the usual tackle bag. I have put in a, a coat or a jacket because it's getting a bit chillier in the evenings and I've got a folding chair but this one's different to uh, the basic one that I sometimes use. This one is a quorum chair that turns into a barrow. I'll show you how that works later and I've also got a net bag in which has a tray for that chair, landing net and a keep net if, uh, if things are going well enough. I've just pulled off a busy main road into a public car park and it's a fair old walk to the stretch of the way uh, that we're going to target with the wheat today. Probably a good 10 minutes or so, which is why I've bought the barrow. And I'm really looking forward to getting some peace down there by the water side. Um, my only slight concerns are we've not had any rain for a good couple of weeks now, so the water's likely to be low and clear. And it's at this time of year, September, late summer or early autumn, depending on your viewpoint, uh, that we have a problem in Surrey with something called pennywort. It's a, a really invasive surface floating water plant that has appeared over the last sort of decade and it really can take on massive growth spurts at this time of year and, and close off some parts of the river. So not been for a few weeks, but let's get down there, get unpacked and see see what things are like. Apologies for the noise, I'm right next to uh, traffic lights, um, but this is where the journey starts. And I'd like to just quickly show you how 
breaking into these corn chairs or the turns of barrows. I'm not sponsored by anyone, believe you me. I'm not trying to promote anything, but I found this has uh, really helped my fishing when I want to travel a bit further off the beaten path. It's got standard adjustable legs. Tip the back up. Take your wheel and this just screws on at the front. And you've got these uh, handles. Screws them at the top, so going pretty easy. Tighten those up too. There you have it. Chair to barrow and one. Now just load it up and we'll get going. And there you have it. Ready to rock and roll. Well, judging by the sweat I've got on it, it's uh, still summer. I think you can just about see the uh, herd of cows grazing behind me and where I've just come from, the lock there, that's uh, pretty busy, a couple of boats waiting to come through. And even the water looks a bit more coloured than I'd hoped, so uh, than I'd dared hope for, I mean. So things looking promising. Now I just need to wipe the sweat off and carry on. And here's the first uh, big patch of the dreaded pennywort. But it's in a bit of a slower patch of water where a little stream comes in and uh, further ahead, it's looking fairly open. You can see a few patches where uh, wherever there's an obstruction, but up ahead, that's where we're uh, off to. Doesn't look too bad. Talk about a blue sky day, it's only a few days ago that a heat wave 30 degrees plus ended and uh, well a week or so ago and it's just built up again this week but perfect temperature really well for us human beings it's uh, low 20s this weekend and uh, just a few clouds around. This path can get really muddy but it's bone dry. And this is the uh, peg or swim that I've chosen. There is a little bit of penny wart on the opposite bank, but nothing too bad. And although those overhanging branches look very tempting for chub or maybe even carp, it's this inside run that I'm really interested in. If you look upstream, you can see there's uh, two branches, two arms of the river, the navigation and the main riverway coming together and that channel over there the current from that little as it is at the moment thanks to dry conditions comes in on this near bank here you can see a few leaves on the surface just indicating how close to the bank it comes and we've actually got about nine or ten foot right off the rod tip there so I've had some good days here for roach bream odd chub Days. I can't wait to get cracking. You might still be able to hear a couple of really noisy boats in the background uh, waiting to go through the lock. Of course, everyone's allowed on the river, but they sounded like they needed a MOT. Um, now I'm sat down because the margins here are so deep uh, and I'm going to be fishing a bolo float. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's a bit like a stick in that you're running it down the swim. 
but most of the weight's kept down uh, the line with an Olivet and you get down to the bottom much quicker and in this kind of deep slow running river you've got a fine bristle tip that gives you that extra bit of sensitivity and you're able to hold it back really effectively if the fish want it slow. I grew up fishing plenty of running waters including the Trent and the Derwent and Derbyshire near Sheffield and when I was fishing stick flow uh, on those waters I'd always like to be stood up you know the the bottom usually gradually shelved away quite often did and you could uh, put a pair of waders on get your bait apron on if you remember what one of those is and uh, get out there in the water especially on a warm day like today but I'm sat down today I've got my tray next to me um, again because I can run a flow off the rod tip and it's a bit too deep to go in I wouldn't fancy wading into uh, nine or ten foot of water so I'll be sat down today and uh, that's nice relaxing fishing for a couple of hours now a quick look at the uh, rod and reel reel is a matrix horizon 3000 pretty sturdy reel could even use it for feeder fishing but i quite like a big reel uh even when i'm stick float or bolo fishing because you've got that cranking power to get it back up the swim quickly i do love fishing the pin sometimes but particularly with bolo when you're fishing at nine or ten foot plus uh, it's handy to have that cranking power to get the rig back up the swim quickly and that's matched with a Drain and Acolyte Ultra Rod, one of my favourites, as I've mentioned in a previous video. 14 foot model, just plenty long enough for uh, fishing almost off the rod tip. And this is one of my favourite inventions. It's not a pole winder, it's a rig winder, so it's <laughs> basically the same, but maybe 50% longer, a bit wider, and uh, it's brilliant for getting fishing if you're short of time because you can uh, even take a three-piece rod to the water ready set up with a stick float waggler or in this case bolo I've just been plumbing up and I'll quickly take you through the rig. Start at the business end, so we've got a small size 18 barbless medium wire hook. That's to a three pound bottom of uh, just three or four inches. That's attached to one of my favorite quick change swivels to stop line twist, because we're going to be retrieving multiple times, even during a short session. And a number eight telltale stots few inches above that you've got another little bulk of three number eight stots and then very simply to an olivet it's locked in place with a few more stots there's about three below it to stop it moving on the strike and a couple above it and that shots the tip of the bolo down to a nice sensitive level so should see any bites easily enough and it's a good yeah 10 feet up to the float which is a top and, top and bottom star. The line actually runs through the center of the float and then has a rubber at the bottom to lock it in place and another rubber at the bottom. And it's quite a fine tip. It's a Maver float called a Signature Finesse. Only a couple of grams. Uh, bolos, if you're not familiar with them, they can run in sizes from anything from about one gram up to 10 grams plus for fishing far out in deep, fast paced waters. But in a slow river like this, end of summer two grams should be plenty and uh, yeah I'm, I'm going with three pound line because there are one or two big fish in here I've had some really nice bream seven or eight pounds in the past and uh, some chub as well so I need something a bit more tough than I'd usually use if I was just targeting roach and dace right I've got the GoPro strapped on uh, not the coolest of looks but if I catch some fish, you'll be able to get a bit of a close-up view of them, I hope. And on the tray, I've got my disgorger, drink, the winder I've just got the rig off, and of course, the wheat. Now, if we take the lid off, I've kept it nice and damp in the juice as they were cooked in. And uh, I'll keep it in that like I would keep hemp in water so they don't dry out. And I'll be feeding this and nothing else. Wheat really is a bait 
a bit like hemp and tares, for example, where you've got to have faith in it, you've got to stick to it and uh, match the hatch. Fish it on the hook and as loose feed. Keep it going in. There might be some roach waiting for us and uh, we catch straight away, but I won't be worried if we don't keep it going in. And uh, once they get hooked on it, you can really see some fantastic action. And in terms of hooking it, it really is quite simple. Just like a caster or, or maggot really, you're aiming for just a gentle push into one end. And there you can see nice plump grain. So let's have a first cast. The flow here can be a little bit temperamental because of the lock just above us. Sometimes you get a bit more water coming through and the fish tend to like that, but sometimes it can get a bit slow. Just flicked it out, just downstream, mended the line, and uh, that tip is nice and low. And a few indications straight away. Not fed anything at this point. And we're in. Easy as that. He's off, what a muppet. Again, just a gentle underarm swing, slightly downstream. You're looking to land the olivet, the hook, the shot ahead of the float. Let it fall down naturally, steadily through the water, get down to that deck area where those first few grains of feed will be heading. Straight away again, missed that one. It's a really good sign. There's a few fish here even without feeding. Picked a good day to come. Put a bit more feed in than I would have done otherwise. Knowing that there's a few there, straight back out, we're in again. Another little dice. There's a little roach. Again, we're talking only an ounce or two, but it's another species that's fallen for the wheat. Let's put him back. And very next chuck, we're into another fish. Another roach, slightly better this one, with a bit of weed added in. Another bit of wheat caught roach. Now, next chuck, hook something a little bit better. It's actually taking me upstream. A bit of back winding required. Not huge. It's a welcome feeling after a lot of small bits. You just keep it out of the weed. Oh, would you believe it's a perch on wheat? I think the landing net's a bit OTT to be honest, but I don't want to miss the chance to uh, show you that wheat will catch pretty much anything. There we have it, a very feisty perch. Only three or four ounces, but even more variety and all on uh, a bait you wouldn't associate with perch for sure. 
and if backwinding seemed a bit OTT for a three or four ounce perch, that's the beauty of fishing in moving water, deep water with light gear. Even a small fish like that can uh, put a bend in your rod. And there's another. Still the size is modest, but every fish is welcome. You just see the wheat at the top lip, small dace, actually getting the bites. Barely any distance down the swim, almost immediately now, because uh, it's such a heavy bait, the feed's obviously dropping through the water, the slow current quite quickly. The fish have come up, there's not many of them, but they've come up for the feed and getting the bites quite quickly. And just to show that boats don't put the fish off on a deep river like this, boats just gone past and had a bite almost immediately. And this time it's a slightly better day, just about swingable. Oh, <laughs> he's lively. Sun's now gone just below the trees and uh, heading for the horizon. I've got my coat on. Still nice and warm, but still a little nip in the air. And I'm still getting bites. Nothing bigger than a few ounces, but very enjoyable session. See if we can get one or two more before we have to pack up. Another small roach and another. Not the best jet, this one. Nice days. Three or four ounce. Just up in the feed again because uh, the bikes are coming on a bit more frequently. Drop in light level certainly helped. It's the proverbial fisher chuck now. This is one of the better roach. Nice to show you that you can pick off the better ones of this bait. There you go, nice little roach. I'm nearly out of time and battery and light. Uh, it's been one a chuck for the last 20 minutes. I've not shown you all the fish because it would have been a bit repetitive viewing, but uh, yeah, there's plenty topping uh, as well as taking the wheat that I've been trickling in for the last couple of hours. It's often the way with the bright days, as we know. Um, dusk is a great time, especially for roach and dace. No netters, nothing over about four ounce, but I've had a really great time. I hope you've enjoyed it too. If you have, please subscribe. Please turn on the notifications, give it a like, tell your mates about it, and uh, I hope to see you again soon.